up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Commerce Lab by Kamsi, the place of everything related to Amazon FBA product level and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, your host, founder and CEO of Ecomsi, and today we bring you another special guest. His name is Jeff, and he's the founder and CEO of Provalytics, which they specialize on everything that has to do with basically having a cookie-less world. I love that slogan. That means he's the king when it comes to attribution. He's going to talk everything related to external traffic and how you can really leverage that data that we know, unfortunately, Amazon doesn't really give to us. So it's a pleasure to have Jeff today on the show, and I'm sure we're going to learn a ton when it comes to you know, the world of ads outside of the bubble of Amazon and also Walmart. So Jeff, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Vincenzo. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, this is a, it's an interesting time that we live in and lots of changes have had for, for folks that are in that Amazon bubble, as you call it, or Walmart <laughs> and elsewhere. It's, it's going to be interesting. Yes, 100%. So before we dive into that topic, which I'm sure we're going to learn a ton today, let's talk a little bit about you. You have such an interesting background. So it, tell us a little bit about why you chose to, you know, go down this vertical and specialize on basically attribution, like uh, how everything starts. Give us a little bit of the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, I, I never thought that I would end up here because to me, the idea of data and analytics doesn't seem like a very sexy occupation. It doesn't yeah. seem very interesting, <laughs> but it, it ended up coming here more by a matter of necessity than anything else. Back in the late 2000s, I was buying media for a, a large weight loss company, and it was towards the end of the quarter, and the CEO said that we had to cut the budget by 50%. Oh, wow. um, and so we looked at... we were. And everything was last click then, just like how most people are. And we looked at all of yeah. the numbers and everything. And, and the things that had the highest uh, cost of acquisition and the lowest return was a uh, non-brand search and paid social. So in order mm -hmm. to hit the budget numbers, we cut, we cut it. In fact, we cut all okay. of it. We cut all non-brand search and we cut all paid social, just turned it off. Because we knew this was a temporary situation because it was just, they had to hit, hit their quarterly numbers. And in order to do that, we had to cut the spend. And everything was fine. There were no problems for about two weeks. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, the bottom dropped out. All of a sudden, wow. the number of new customers started to start to turn down mm -hmm. to a trickle. And, and cost of acquisition, CAC started to increase on things, even like brand search and return started to go, go crazy. And the CEO said, what the hell's going on? What did you do? And I'm like, yeah. I haven't changed anything. Except two weeks ago, <laughs> you asked me to cut spend and I cut the things that didn't appear to be working. And that's when I realized that maybe last click wasn't the answer. So we did exactly. some deep, deep analysis and we realized that in actuality, non-brand search and paid social were working, but they were filling the funnel. They weren't at the mm. bottom of the funnel. So on a click basis, they didn't appear to be working, but they were filling the funnel. And we also realized it was taking about two to three weeks for people who became aware of us to actually buy. So that's why it took so long. And so that led to the development of one of the first multi-touch attribution solutions, uh, which I founded back in 2008 called C3 Metrics. Built mm -hmm. that up. It was primarily focused on larger enterprise clients. Exited there in about 2019, right before the pandemic, and thought I would never go back. Thought I was done. <laughs> I had done my time in measurement. And then all yeah. of a sudden, and back then you should know that that was all focused on collecting every single click and every single impression. Uh, but just a couple of years ago, the world changed. We couldn't get impressions from YouTube. Everything mm -hmm. now became a walled garden. And everything that I created there was no longer going to work in this new world, this post iOS changes, this post cookie exactly. world. So I said, all right, you know, there's an opportunity here to get another uh, opportunity to jump in and help all my all my friends and colleagues in this world and create a new cookie list measurement solution. And that became Provalytics and that's what brought me back. I love it. What a story, man. Yeah, you pretty much pivoted from, you know, all the challenges that 
And I have seen that. I have seen from my friends and people in the industry when the cookie thing started to explode, a lot of people has been struggling. But it's amazing to see that you know you pivoted, you found the solution, and that's exactly what I want to talk about today. Because I have so many clients and friends that, to be honest, they haven't recovered after that. They haven't really mastered how to now have a business that doesn't rely as much uh, as it used to be when it comes uh, to the cookies. So let's start with that. I mean, what are some of the the basics we have to understand now in terms of running a business with without cookies you know cookies are getting more and more limited these yeah. companies are not sharing as much data as they used to so i guess what is one of the learning uh, um, or tips you want to share today about that like what is the starting point to mitigate that yeah well really the starting point uh is to is to look at you know understand first what's going to change the biggest so mm -hmm. If, you, if you're living in the Amazon bubble and all you're doing is selling on Amazon or selling on Walmart, you're really not going to notice many changes because that's what we would call a walled garden. Exactly. Amazon knows everything there is to know about every customer on Amazon. And if you're spending your dollars exclusively there, <laughs> nothing's going to change. Where exactly. things are going to change is that if you're buying off of Amazon to drive traffic to Amazon, or drive traffic to like a Shopify store or some other place mm -hmm. like retail, that's where things are going to change. The biggest shift that people are going to notice is that retargeting, behavioral retargeting is 100% focused on third-party cookies. So you're going to notice changes in that. That's not going to operate as well as it used to. Uh, the second thing you're going to notice is that your ability to target in certain sites is also going to change. And for folks that are heavy into meta, They've already noticed that. That's happened like over the last three to five years. All of a sudden you log in and you notice a big red bar across that says exactly. some of your campaigns have been impacted. So you go and you try to recreate and you're like, oh, I can't buy that anymore. And what you're noticing is that where you used to be able to go very specific and highly targeted, all of a sudden things have become very broad. And yes. for a lot of marketers, it's very uncomfortable. Because if I'm a digital native and all I've ever lived in is the digital world, I was taught that in order to be successful, I have to target. And the tighter my targeting, the better my sales will be. But the reality is the more you target, the more expensive the media is. And I've seen marketers that have done an amazing job of driving business and they've targeted really well. And yet on the back end, the company's losing money because it's not profitable. And so- yeah. That's one of kind of the payoffs. And I think to really understand it, and the other third thing that's going to be impacted, obviously, is measurement, because measurement was always based upon seeing the whole picture. And now we can't see that picture. But I think what we have to understand is that as marketers, if we pan the camera back, most marketers today believe that you spend money to get clicks to then get sales. And the reality is, is that the way that marketing functions is you spend money to get impressions. Impressions drive awareness. Awareness is what leads to clicks. And that's what leads to sales. So we're missing, a lot of marketers are forgetting that you're buying eyeballs, not exactly. clicks. Clicks are the result of eyeballs. So that's, that's an important distinction because if we go back to how things were before there was digital, Marketers only lived in a world where we had TV, radio, print, and out mm -hmm. of home. And there was it was all about eyeballs, and there was no way to directly connect any marketing impression to any sale. There was no direct line unless someone walked yeah. in with a coupon. And yet brands like BMW, PepsiCo, Coke, uh, all of these brands were able to grow very effectively. And so we're not going backwards. We have to borrow from the past in order to move forward. And marketers have to understand that the future is going to be a broader targeted future. But the advantage of that is that if you target a little broader, your reach is bigger. You're going to be reaching more people, which means your funnel is fuller, which means you have a better opportunity to sell, which is great. That's what everybody wants. 
Yes, I think you describe it so perfectly because I think the huge mistake I see all the time, especially people when they come from a marketplace or just Amazon and Walmart, they use that for every single dollar they put in, they're going to get something in exchange and they're able to track the clicks and the ROAS and the ACOS and all of that. I think when now you jump into platforms such as Meta to do advertisement and you lose control of, you know, as you say, if in, in terms of clicks now you're measuring awareness, I feel people is like, no, I don't want awareness. I want revenue, right? I want revenue, revenue, revenue. And I feel that kind of mindset is is being uh, ruining a lot of uh, strategies when it comes to how people are driving their business because they don't understand that sometimes it's a longer play. It's about having X amount of touch points with that person in multiple platform, multiple placements. Only that person creates that familiarity and decides to, to make the purchase, which now, takes me to my next question, which is, I feel with all these changes that, you know, we don't have as many cookies as we used to, therefore we don't really know certain metrics anymore. Do you feel now it means that in order for us to get a, a, a better ROAS or, or outcome on this platform when it comes to ads, we need to now have a longer, um, basically, um, timeline when it comes to run these campaigns, because before, and you know this, before the whole cookie thing went down, if people when running ads on Facebook and Instagram, it was, it was like a 24, 48 hour test. If no clicks, no sell, you kill it. And then you try again and train it and try again. Now I, it feels like because it's more on the awareness uh, feel of things, things are going to take longer. So what is your take on that? Do you feel now things are going to be slower to really get a result because of that? I think they're going to take as long as they've always taken. But I think that mm -hmm. what you described about the immediacy that marketers expect when they put money into the market that they're mm -hmm. going to get a return, it's it's unrealistic. And the research yeah. uh, doesn't show that that's the case. One has to understand that every channel and every campaign has a different, what we call days to conversion, mm -hmm. uh, depending upon the creative, depending upon the site that it's on, depending gotcha. upon the messaging and everything like that. So for example, it, when you... Uh, by a, like a, a non-brand or a, a, a generic, um, um, you know, search ad, whether it's on Amazon or Google or wherever, um, you, that is a category type brand term. And that's going to take X number of days. So you have to be able to look at and understand how long is each one of these taking. And, and the reason that's important is because you're going to find some of these upper funnel channels are going to take anywhere from two to three weeks to be activated. And what that means is, is that if it takes two weeks, when you set the campaign up, you should not be making any changes for one to one and a half times. You shouldn't even evaluate the performance until three weeks later. But what I find is, again, with digital natives, since we, we like to go in and change things, we want to log in and say, oh, let me, let me change <laughs> some wording here. Let me do this. You want to make certain that you give it enough time to keep going. The other thing that's important as well, too, is that there's something in marketing that I call the motorboat effect. Mm -hmm. And the motorboat effect is the idea that if you here, I live in New Hampshire. We have this big lake called Lake Winnipesaukee. Mm -hmm. And if you start on one side of the lake with your motorboat and you go full speed to the middle of the lake as fast as you can, and then you turn off the engine, you shut the engine, the, the, the boat's not going to stop. It's going to coast. <laughs> for a period of time. And marketing is just like that. So if you have a campaign that you don't think is working and you shut it off, guess what? It's still going to keep working, sometimes for weeks, months later. And marketing, we call that the carryover effect. So marketing can have a multitude of effects that take time. And we know this as well. You can do some research on this. You can research something called advertising ad stock that shows mm -hmm. that ads take time till they have an impact. And it's just important to understand that all of these things are all working together. And what we find for a lot of multi-channel or omni-channel marketers that are operating in multiple channels uh, who are measuring via last click, which is the most popular, or yes. they just measure based upon GA4, what, what ends up happening is that when they look at their final sales and they see where they came from, 20 to 30% of those sales, they can track back to something. The other 70 to 80% either came from just showed yeah. up or they came through organic. And the problem yeah. is, is that most marketers today are making decisions on where to allocate budgets just based upon 20 to 30%. Mm -hmm. 
And what attribution truly does, especially this next generation of attribution, is it actually looks at how are people just showing up? Where are they coming from? And that allows you to then go invest in channels like CTV. Like we have clients that are doing tests and CTV, and it is like (laughs) doubling and tripling the impact of their ads that they've had on for a very long time. It's, It's really amazing. Just doing a small investment in the upper funnel can have a massive, massive impact on your uh, return on ad spend. Yeah. And you mentioned there's something that I feel people struggle a lot lately. Like, you know, we have so many platforms that we can run ads on. Like we're talking Meta, right? We're talking Google Ads, now TikTok, uh, Bing. I mean, there are so many platforms realistically that we can run ads. And I think the challenge it starts to come into the, into the picture when you have all these ads running at the same time but as you mentioned then you don't really know what is actually moving the needle so i guess my question to you because i'm sure you encounter this challenge with your clients like is there some advice in terms of or maybe software or any uh, strategies that you recommend of how you can consolidate all this data and really uh, have everything in one place because i feel like if you don't realistically you're playing like kind of like a casino right you're putting some chips here some chips here Let's see when the jackpot comes, right? But it's not really strategy. So how you handle that when you have so many channels and and you don't have as much attribution as you wanted to have under your control? Well, first I'll give you the DIY approach. It's a takeaway Mm -hmm. for all the listeners and viewers to say, okay, what can I do? Because I know everyone who's watching this right now or listening has a Google Sheet. And that Mm -hmm. Google Sheet has a list of their channels, how much they spend each day, how many clicks they got. There's another column for cost per click and then the cost per sale by channel and stuff like that. What I would, and they've got it like going back like the last two years, probably. It's just this (laughs) ongoing thing that, that either they update or their agency updates. And what I would tell you to do right now is go to that Google sheet and add another column called impressions Mm -hmm. and go back historically and add in impressions for all of those. Stop looking at clicks. You need to be looking at impressions. And the reason for this simply is that we have a whole new generation of digital channels that what we call are no-click digital channels. Podcasting and CTV are digital channels where there's nothing to click. And yet they work. So how do you add them into your spreadsheet? How would you even justify them to a CFO? It's impossible because you're going to put down a light item where you have zero (laughs) clicks and tons of spend. And the cost for sale is is going to be zero. I mean, it's just, it's going to be zeroed out. No one is going to- The worst channel. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. But then you have to say to yourself, well, can all of these big brands and all of these smart marketers, are they, are they that dumb? No, they're not dumb. But- they, they at least went back and did the work. And I would tell you to fill that, that report all the way out, you know, going all the way back as far back as your spreadsheet goes. That's a DIY approach. And I would try to shift your looking, shift away from clicks and understand that impressions come first. You're buying impressions. That builds awareness. And then that's going to lead to clicks and that's going to lead to sales. And that you need to understand that there's going to be a time frame of a delay between how many impressions you got in a day. And so you now have to kind of adjust things. You may want to play with that in your spreadsheet and come up with your own formula. But you're right that as you start to get into more and more channels, it becomes a very complicated, uh, nearly impossible math problem to solve. And and you're you're a thousand percent right. And that's where we're able to come in with very sophisticated software that uses some of the best machine learning and AI tools that are available. But what's interesting about the techniques that we use is that even though we're it's AI and it's machine learning and it sounds all new, everything old is new again. The exactly. techniques we're utilizing, we use a combination of a technique that was founded in the 1700s. I'm not wow. kidding you. 1700s wow. called Bayesian. And Bayesian is what is driving all of the AI today, all of the self-driving cars, because it thinks the same way human beings think. And then we're also using a technique uh, that was founded in the 60s called seemingly unrelated regressions, 
that allow us to solve all of these channels and very complicated equations all at once. Now, mm -hmm. we could have done this 10 years ago, but the problem was is that to get data from a client and solve it, <laughs> by the time we yeah. solved it would be several months later, but now computing <laughs> cycles are so much faster. So it's like the computers have finally caught up with the ideas of the past and we can turn things around in minutes and hours versus weeks or months. So now it actually becomes actionable. But the difference now is that we don't have the user level data, but what we yeah. do have is we have daily data. So our platform takes in daily aggregated data. So when you think about a campaign, you think about a campaign, you think about uh, the ad or the creative that's with it, and maybe another piece like a placement type of information. So we take in very granular data where we take in impressions and clicks and costs per day. It comes in and then it gets output so that if I'm the person who's buying, let's say, search or meta or Amazon, mm -hmm. I'm going to get output what's working well, what's not working well, and where I should shift my budget around in order to get uh, and improve my return on ad spend. Uh, right. And that's really what is this next level of attribution that doesn't involve cookies. It doesn't involve any PII data. And we've got some clients that are larger retailers that are not only on Amazon, but are also in Walmart and Target, but are also being sold in retail. And they're advertising on TV. They're advertising in podcasts. They're advertising online. They're advertising on Amazon. Everywhere. All of these places. <laughs> And we're able to see the impact of those ads across all of those platforms and show the impact in each of the online marketplaces and also in retail as well, too. That's what this next generation allows us to do. So even though we're living in a world now without cookies, since we're yeah. borrowing from the past, we've kind of moved forward many, many years into the future, which is what's amazing. Oh, love it. Love it. Now, um, I'm sure for everybody listening and, and watching this episode, some, some of them might say, okay, I'm just getting started with my journey when it comes to running ads into Meta, Google, and so on. And I'm sure after so many years of you doing this across all the platforms, you have identified after everything that's going on with the cookies, the few platforms that still give you some kind of control over your data and still can do clever things when it comes to retargeting and so on. So what I'm trying to get with this question is, somebody just getting started with external traffic, essentially anything outside of Amazon and Walmart. What would you say right now is a platform that at least as 2024 February that we're recording this is the one that gives you some kind of still control uh, when it comes to retargeting uh, and proper attribution without having to become super clever um, and, and you don't doing data analytics. <laughs> I, I would say, I would say right now, you know, even though we've heard because of all the iOS changes mm -hmm. that Meta's performance is, is poor and it's not okay. great. Um, yeah. Our data shows that that is not the case at all. Meta still continues to outperform and, and do really well. It's just that they, they're blinded and where they're mm -hmm. really blinded, especially as if you're utilizing Meta to drive traffic to these other platforms, the ability to do the CAPI, the server to server type stuff is very difficult. Okay. And that's where you're somewhat limited. But what's important to understand is you have to kind of pan the camera back again and, it, it, and look at the big picture, which is if you're selling products and your demographic is people 35 or 40 plus in the US, you, yeah. you should be advertising on Meta because those folks are living in meta, especially 50 plus without a doubt. So if you think yeah. that most of the people buying are 50 plus, you should definitely be advertising on meta because that's where they're spending a lot of their time digitally is right there. So remember that the, the rule still stands, which is you want to be where the eyeballs are. And so you need to really understand who is buying your product. What, what is it about them? And, and, and start digging into some of the market research to show where those folks are. Because to people who live in the meta world, when the whole cookie thing happened with iOS, they didn't leave. They're still there. Uh, it didn't mean anything to them. They're still spending their time there. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think actually something that I feel people utilize a lot is the pixel. Like a lot of people don't really understand the power that, you know, pixel can give in terms of attribution. And maybe if you want to just, you know, explain a little bit about, you know, what is the power of having and using a pixel? Because I'm, I'm amazed sometimes that people don't even know what is the, the power behind a pixel. So it would be great to hear your insights and maybe some high level strategies that you could bring to the table about how people, you know, can still leverage a pixel, even with the limitation that still have in terms of attribution, you know? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, pixels are still working right now, at least through Q3 of, of this year. Uh, and the power of that, it enables when someone comes over from like a meta environment, it allows meta to know who they are. And, and then when they come to the site, and someone comes to your your page for the first time, a meta can identify them, especially if they're active on meta. And, and like I said, if they're over 40 and they live in the US, there's probably an 85% chance that they're, they probably already have a tab open to meta. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. Meta definitely knows who they are. And then you can start actively retargeting inside of meta. And remember, we're not just talking about Facebook. We're also talking about Instagram as well and threads as well too. So it, it, creates this unique kind of environment that's all self-contained. Now, they the mobile aspect of things did give them a little bit of an issue. So then what you can also do is hook up with this CAPI, which is this server-to-server connection where yeah. it's not as reliant on third-party cookies, but it's in the background. Your site is talking to them. And there's some great third-party companies out there. So if the site that you're running, if you have an external site that is not uh, doesn't have a push button or a plug-in to automatically connect. There's some third-party services out there like Elevar that do a wonderful job of hooking you yeah. up where it's just one click and you're all set because that, that CAPI setup can be somewhat of a nightmare. Uh, exactly. It's definitely, you, you will notice an instantaneous improvement because all of a sudden Meta now knows more who these people are and can do a better job of targeting and remember, Meta wants to do a good job on your behalf because they know that if you do better, you're going to spend more money with them. So it's in their best interest. So you're just helping them get more data is essentially what this is all about. Awesome. That's amazing, Jeff. I mean, we cover so many interesting things in this pretty much a uh, uh, 30 minutes. It's been a pleasure to have him board. I'm sure we only scratching the surface because this goes so much deeper but at the same time i'm sure all our listeners and the ones watching already have that flavor in their mouth that they really want to go deeper and really figure out this and i'm sure you uh, you can help them with that so it will be interesting to know you know how you can provide value to all the listeners and the ones watching when it comes to figuring out everything in terms of attribution and how they can reach out to you yeah yeah i think one of the first stops for folks is that we put together all of our years of knowledge into a certification program that's available at attributioncertified.com. It, there's no cost. And what it does is it goes through the entire kind of historical basis of everything from click-throughs to view-throughs. There's even all sorts of cool information. Like most people don't understand that what a UTM is. Everyone understands in Google right. Analytics, UTM source. But most people don't understand that UTM is from a company called Urchin. And mm -hmm. Urchin was one of the first web analytics companies that was acquired by Google and became Google Analytics and now GA4. And it actually stands okay. for Urchin Tracking Module. So it's those bits of information that help, help marketers build a really strong foundation that'll help prepare you for all of these cookie list changes that are going on. So you can go to our website, probolytics.com. There's a link there or go to Attribution Certified. It'll take you about an hour, hour and a half there's a, a quiz and a questionnaire afterwards, and you end up with a nice certificate that you can put on your LinkedIn to nice. state that you're attribution you certified. That. So we offer that <laughs> no cost. So I, I would highly recommend everybody check that out because it'll definitely help them on their on their journey. Awesome, Jeff. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your knowledge. Uh, I'm looking forward to having in the future. I'm sure this uh, cookie thing is gonna keep evolving and evolving as they keep getting a more control over our data so i'm very interested to learn more from you as things evolve so it's been a pleasure and thank you so much and see you in the next one yeah definitely thank you so thank you bye bye